to Marie Goodson. Let me just fix this of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy. And I don't have this. Hold on, y'all. Ancient African Wisdom for the Mind and Sister. I'm getting this together. Give me a chance, everybody. I'm sorry I thought I had it together, but okay. I'm going to... <laughs> I'm glad we're building an audience here. I'm so glad. All right, we're going to just make it do what it do. So I'm going to share my live stream. And uh, for those that are on, thank you. So I'm just going to share my live stream and then we're going to get into it. So let me share to page Blackberry Beauty. Okay. So we're going to talk about, hold on ladies and brothers, <laughs> okay. All right, hey Jen Sadiq, hey Marilyn Fontaine, hey y'all, let me get my lighting together. Yeah, it's a little darker today, so we're going to work with this light and the lighting and, uh, I'm going to get it together. Okay, it's a little different, but you know what? We are here, and so blessings to everyone. Hey, Brandy Barnes. Hey, Maisha. How are you? How is everybody? I hope all is well. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to just find this the proper light for where I am, and hopefully we will get that together. If not, it's going to be an intimate evening. Okay, it's going to be an intimate evening. So... I want to talk to you about this idea of the number one year and what that means. But let me let you get on. So greetings, everyone. Continue to come on. And then we're going to get really into it because I was really vibing today. First of all, I hope everyone is well. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you? I just started. I didn't really get any words. I've been messing with this camera and finding the light. And today's a little more difficult. But you know what? We are going to keep it rolling. So I just wanted to say peace and blessings to everyone. I hope that your day was absolutely beautiful. I want to thank you all for always uh, being on the live stream. And for those that are sharing the live stream, thank you so very much for doing that. And I want to ask those that are not sharing to share, 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 and continue to share. Oh, I realize I forgot to cut off the cut on the light back there, but that's okay. So I'm asking you to share, share, and continue to share. So um, I want to talk to you today about something very special, very important, and I think uh, very poignant. And I know you're going to take something away from it. Uh, hey, Jackie. Hey, Jill. Greetings, sis. Thank you. Love and blessings to you, too. Oh, thank you, queen. Okay, ladies, so I'm going to get up close and personal with you, and we're going to talk. As you know, as I've been doing the last few nights, I'm going to continue to do. Spirit is allowing me to flow, and I'm going to flow, 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 and I just want you to be a part of it. For those that don't know, all of this is inspired by, sponsored by, and hope you participate in my six-week training course that starts this Friday, March 3rd, and it is six weeks. It's virtual, and I actually do, I have an academy, Black Bear Beauty Academy. It's a virtual academy. You could be anywhere in the world, and you get to spend six weeks with me in a private group, and we have a curriculum and a course description, and we are dealing with speaking activation, learning to speak our truth, but we're using the medium of theater and drama therapy and spoken word and creativity. And I want you to know that don't think just because you're, you think you're not creative or you're not a poet or you're not a writer. This is for anyone who has lost their creativity, believes that creativity is connected to your goddess good health. Believe that your creativity is connected to your fortune. For, or for those that, or maybe you don't believe that. Maybe everything in your life told you that that's not true and you really want it to be true. I want to show you how to make it true. We're going to use theater, dance skits, can create our own uh, dialogues, monologues. We're going to use our characters to help us to heal. It's just going to be fun, but it's going to be rewarding. You will see results afterwards. And so I've, I'm always wanting you to know why. Why is it the perfect time to delve into self-expression? 
Why is this time 2017, 2017? Why is this the right time? And thank you, Jen, her flow girl flow. I appreciate that. Why is this the right time to actually do something new? Let me explain about, if you're just talking about basic numerology, I am not claiming to be some top guru numerologist. I know it basically, and that's what you need to know in order to, to know where you are. And I know that, and I know it intuitively as well. And so this is what spirit has put on my heart, and I'm going to share it with you. Hey, Octavia, peace and love. Yes, give it up. We need your love and divinity now. All hands on deck. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Asia, I love it. I can see the people that saw it is like, yeah, do you? Okay. So this is what spirit told me. So you got to think about, so 2017, this year, 2 plus 1 plus 7 equals 10. In numerology, there's no 10. You take the 0 away, there's a 1. So there's cycles of nine. So we just left 2016. If you add two plus one plus six, that equals eight. I'm sorry, equals nine. We were in our ninth year. Our ninth year is about completion. Let me explain to you so you understand how deep the completion is. I don't, I, I don't know what your life was like in the last nine years. If like anybody else's, it probably was a series of ups and downs. For some people, it might have been a whole bunch of downs. For some people, it might have been a whole bunch of ups. It might have been that completion year, number nine might have been your year. For other people, that completion year, number nine might have been hell and back. But not just the number nine, not the ninth year, the whole entire year. So the whole nine years is one cycle. So I want you right now just to think over all the things that have occurred, transpired, and even been completed or not over the last nine years. And I want you to think of the greatest things that transpired within the last nine years and then I want you to think of the, some of the worst things that really happened to you during the last nine years. And I want you to think, like for me, I was a, seven, I was a raw foodist for seven of the nine years. For seven of the nine years, I was a raw foodist. The two other two years, I remember I had an abortion within those two years prior to getting on YouTube. That was a very trying year for me. I think that the abortions was a way for me in a lot of ways uh, to heal myself. To The raw food was a way, maybe feeling guilty, maybe needing to release, maybe that needing to, to purge. And I went to a, a, a definite extreme, but it was an extreme that made me who I am today and made me where I am today. And it was needed in that nine-year cycle. When you're in the one, even whatever you did that was amazing, that was great, that was the highest you've ever gone, even that good feeling, that great feeling, that, that marriage, that relationship, even all the good things that happen in the nine-year cycle, it's done. You can't think about it, reminisce about it, hold on to it, wish you had it, where did it go, why are you not living like this, why are you not having what you used to have, even the good you cannot hold on to. Nine years, whatever that was, seven years. So it makes sense that in my year one that I'm actually deciding to eat cooked food again as opposed to just be a raw foodist. Think about it. It's, the it's not just starting over because if you think of the idea of starting over, then you're thinking about doing something you're already doing. You're just starting over, doing it again, maybe doing it another way. No, no, no. One is not about starting over. One is about making a new do you understand again? One year is not about starting over. One is about making a new. It is time to make a new. So you have the opportunity to completely write your life the way you would want it to be. Now, what one would assume is that in the last nine years, you are nine years older, <laughs> which means nine years more mature, which means you know more than you've known before. You have gained some wisdom. So now when you go into the one, which will not happen for another nine years, mind you, so let's think about how valuable and important this time is. We are only in February of our year one. <laughs> we can now decide. And let me say this to you. You deciding what your, the rest of the nine years are going to be like, whether you know it or not, whether you're conscious of it or not, whether you intend to or not, by the things you think, the things you say, the things you speak, the way you express yourself, the way you don't express yourself. So you might as well be very conscious 
You might as well be very focused and you might as well really decide what you want the next nine years to be because you get to write the story in the way that you want to do it. Whew. That's the spirit said. Jack can graduate, graduate from college. I got missing stuff. Um, ain't that the truth? Nine years older. Yes. Making a new sounds amazing. Yes, Jen. You got it. Tracy says, yes. What you focus on grows. Absolutely. But think about it. So think about the idea of what you focus on grows. What you focus on grows anyway. It grows if you're older, younger, if you're black, white, whatever you focus on, it grows, right? But what about taking that same thing that is always occurring, what you focus on grow? What about taking that and then putting it in the one year, which means not only do everything you focus on grows, but everything that you want can happen. That this is the energy is in place for you to focus and focus and get it. And understand that you could, so what could you do? How can you make the most out of this one year of the one, which is the start of the nine year one cycle, nine year cycle that you are about to go into. First of all, give thanks. That's the first thing you want to do because you now know. I was telling my client today, wouldn't it have been nice if we were socialized or conditioned or taught that every day we have to be careful what we think about it, but every year even more? And that no matter how bad or how good, and I keep saying it, your last nine years was, you get to start again. So the fact that you woke up in your, in your one year, <laughs> some say 10 to one year, the fact that you're here and you made it and many didn't says something to you that, wow, I really must have a choice. I really must be able to determine when and where I want to go. But Nubia is saying, Lisa Marie is saying, there's a way to use the energy. I'm in, I'm, I have an Afrocentric spiritual decor channel on YouTube. That's my new channel. That is the new that's where I want to go. I'm doing a training course for six weeks that's talking about speaking activation, speaking your truth, but allowing you to heal through it using theater and, and, and drama and therapy. That's exactly what should be going on in the one year. The one year, too, to me is about like a child, you don't quite know everything and what the circumstances are. So I believe the one year is about, I won't say reckless abandonment. I would say uh, careful abandonment in a way. And let me say what I mean. You have to start going deeply into the things that you fear. So for me, I think one of my fears of that eating for seven years and staying so dealing with, I mean, really, I guess it was weight issues. I act like it wasn't, but any time I tried to get that skinny, I don't know, something was going on. But what I, what, what I now know about that is that I now have to allow whatever I thought the fear of if I ate cooked food. Maybe I had a fear almost around eating cooked food. Whatever those greatest fears were and are for you, you have to delve so deeply into it because what you'll realize is that there is no boogeyman. There really is no big bad wolf. That it really isn't going to be as horrible as you think. That there's something in letting yourself go. I mean, I know there's a term and, and people mean it literally. You know, what happened to her? She let herself go. Well, why you say that? Well, she gained weight or she let herself go. She uh, hangs out or late at night or she doesn't get as much rest. She let herself go. She's out of shape. She let. No, we need to let ourselves go. Because all the other ways is a controlling. And number one, what you don't want, you want focus. Once you understand what you want and that it is good for you and others. But you want to be able to delve. You want to be, so some could say, take a risk, take a chance, come out of complacency. No, I mean delve deeply as if you're dying into that thing. Allow the worst thing that you thought could happen. Allow to see. Go into the thing that's preventing you because you think something's going to happen, but you don't know. And go into it. When I eat, y'all, I eat. <laughs> Because when I didn't eat, I did not eat. I mean, we had no business. Yes, I haven't had pasta. I haven't had spaghetti. No, it wasn't whole wheat. It wasn't quinoa. <laughs> it wasn't whatever, whatever. It was spaghetti from, it was the, it was the whole food, 360, 365 days. Or that's what they call 365. It was their bread, honey. 
I had a five days straight. Couldn't help it. I ain't having it seven years. I, I delved deeply. I had a love affair. My husband makes the best spaghetti. We use these not. We use this uh, this tempeh or soy, whatever. I know not too much soy. I don't care. I had to delve deeply. If soy was going to kill me, I wanted to know now. <laughs> was it worth the seven years of never eating it again? Was it worth the seven years of not having uh, spaghetti? And my husband cooked it so well. But instead of me doing that thing that I do, good word says, thank you, Jill. Instead of me doing that thing that I do where I start going, oh, no, I'm eating too much spaghetti. I'm going to get too big. Or I'm not going to be conscious. Or I'm not going to be spiritual. Or something's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to self-destruct. <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, what's going to happen? And now I'm like, huh, no, nah, baby, pass the next plate. You want more? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seconds? Mm-hmm. A bigger plate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want a baguette with that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want some bread, and I want some spaghetti, and, you know, and I, I delved. It was deep. You know, okay, it's the fifth day. I'm delved out like I'm now, but I would have never done that to myself. See, what I would have did was the first week or the first day I had it, I would have made myself sick because automatically my brain, thank you for the laughter and the joy, my brain would have been programmed to worry, to over contemplate, to make myself feel bad. But see, I want to break that habit, that all or nothing habit, that in so deep habit, that extreme habit. I never have to do that again. So if my extreme habit was to restrict myself all of the time, now I don't do that. And what I thought was going to happen was I'll never be able to stop eating spaghetti if I ate spaghetti. I might just eat it every night. I'll be out of control. I'm over it. It's five days. I'll see it in about five, six more months. I'm just saying I'm over it. I'm glad we got to do it. You know, like, I didn't die either, y'all. My butt got real big. But come on, that could be a bonus. So, I mean, it was okay. It was okay. I didn't die. It was number one year. You know what I'm saying? It was okay. It was okay. So you have to, number one is like that opportunity to like just go for it, thinking like like a little kid, like I'm one, like I'm newborn, like, hmm, if I jump off of that chair, <laughs> I wonder if that floor will be hard. I mean, like you have to do that thing because maybe you're laying on your feet and it wasn't hard to you, it was hard to somebody else who did it. You have to, you have to, so you're really creating. So me teaching this speaking activation course is saying, now let me tell you the other side, is saying if you're not careful with how you're thinking, feeling, seeing things, experiencing life, expressing yourself, you are expressing yourself, and if you don't use and harness the power, guess what? It doesn't mean the power go away. The power is still here, and the power will use you. So even if you don't believe in the one year, you don't believe in numerology, you don't believe that you have the power to change, the power that is generating right now in the universe is still there. And you just not using something that the creator gave you for free. You always, we always want something. Okay, you got it. It's free. It's an abundance of energy and it's right now and it's a time period and you should use it. You should harness it. You should take the speaking activation for six weeks from the Blackberry Beauty Academy. This is the right time. You should do it because you're afraid to do it. You should do it because you're not sure about it. You should do it because you don't know what's ahead. That's why. And then realizing that she's saying, Lisa Marie is giving us the opportunity to write it. She's saying, this is the one year. This is the, the second month of the year. She's saying, opportunity says, write it. Write it. Continue to write it. We're going to talk about colors that you wear to call up to Houthi and all the ancient scribes. We're talking about this is the most powerful time to set intentions is right now. Are you ready? So she, L. Robinson says, test your limits. I got it. Absolutely. There you go. Test your limits. Yes. Je uh, Angela says, hey, Jen, Jessica Butler just joined us, and I am so thankful. I, the, the understanding that I'm getting in the last, since I moved here, and because, but it's a continual cycle. See, this is how you know you're truly changing. 
Of course, when we find ourselves in a predicament, <laughs> and we'll talk about it. Let me just not because I laugh because I find myself in many predicaments in my life, but I choose to find my th- myself into more positive, more focused predicaments. Although I, the nine years, like I said, seven years of raw, two years, two years before that had an abortion. I mean, like it was, it was, it was a trying year. Even the raw part, I moved, had to move, almost got evicted, got robbed by gunpoint, moved again. Got married before it was all over. I mean, <laughs> it ended well, you know. It ended well, but it was so much. But even in all that good, and I could say my daughter went to college. I found myself in a lot of ways. I got to spend three months in New York. So these are good things. It doesn't matter. What I see us do sometimes is we'll go, you know, I don't know what it is. I used to be so thin, and now look at me. I remember, girl, I remember when I was hot, and I used to be able to wear them jeans. So what? It's, you don't do that no more. That's done. Don't even think about it. Or I remember when, you know, I was neglected as a child, and my mom or dad didn't pay attention to me. Okay, it's over. You don't, it ain't happening no more. That's because you know why? You get to write it differently. You don't have to accept that anymore. It's already done. You get to write it differently. You get to write, wipe the sweat slate clean. You waiting for somebody else to do it. You waiting for your therapist to wipe the slate clean for you. You waiting for your man to wipe the slate clean for you. You waiting for the church, the preacher man, Jesus Christ himself. You have to wipe the slate clean. You have to wipe the slate clean. And so when the slate is clean, we human. We just going to put more things on it. <laughs> you got to put things on the slate. But what you going to put on the slate? Now, this is the real question. What are you going to put on the slate? I want you to put some things. I want to show you how to put some things. Take the speaking activation starts March 3rd, which is this Friday. I think you will love it. I'm telling you that you will. I know it. Uh, Kendall, thank you, said I'm ready to wipe the slate clean. You got to be. What a choice in life. I know that this is hard for some of us to believe. We've never believed, we've never been socialized to believe that we are, make our, our, we, we pick our parents, we choose our lives, and we choose all the circumstances in it. That's just too much responsibility. But this is a time that you want the responsibility because if you don't take it, some, some energy, somebody's going to pick up the energy that surrounds you and they're going to use your opportunity to change your life they're going to do it for you. Then you're going to be complaining about my husband won't let me. You're going to be complaining I can't because my kids came back home to live with me after going out in the world. You're going to talk about you can't because you're too heavy or you're too skinny or you're too dark or you're too light. And I'm saying to you that the universe is going, well, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? And you're going, um, I'm waiting for you to tell me. And Spirit's like, no, I'm waiting for you to tell me. You first. You first. You have to realize the power that you have in you. You know, I'm discovering new things. Like, you know, <laughs> I had a client today. She said, I saw your video about how well you, knew how well you organize your home and how clean. And she said, I told my daughter, girl, we got a long way to go. I don't know if we can even invite her over. And I said, no, don't think like that. That was not always my reality. I mean, I had, I had, I had uh, visions of that. I had sparks of that. I knew how to use, and I'm going to tell you so you understand. Hey, Karen, thank you so much. Karen says, come on now, queen, speak. I knew that how to, we were taught this in our house, that when you're in a rut, a situation, a problem or a challenge, then you do that organization cleaning and putting everything together. I didn't understand it was a lifestyle. I didn't understand that it was a creative expression. I didn't understand that I was so talented in it that if I didn't just use it to, to hustle up some money and use it as the gift that the creator gave me, that I would have been further along. But guess what? That all the way of thinking didn't know, that's in last the nine years that passed. That ain't in today. So it don't matter no more. I don't have to hold on to what I didn't know and didn't know. I know now. 
and I'm using it to my advantage. Yvette says, wow, I left Detroit. My son was shot multiple times, so I came back to take care of him. That's right, at the same time, two of our uncles died. Two years later, my dad died, my goodness. My grandsons entering the world saved my sanity. Yes, they did, Yvette. Thank you for sharing that. I remember you shared that with me personally. I really appreciate that you shared that, and you're so absolutely right. You get it now. Write it out. So how you want it to look now, now you could have a choice. How do you want it to look? Because the universe will write it for you and they don't always get the thing because they don't, they ain't, the creator ain't in the body. That's why the creator needs you too. The reason why the creator can't do it all or the creator doesn't do it all because we know the, the, the higher power can do it all is because it needs you to do it. Why would I create you if I was a god or a goddess? Or why would I create you if I was a supreme being to do exactly what I want you to do? That don't sound like God. That sound like the devil. Now, if we're talking about something holy, something divine, something high, something spiritual, if we're talking about that, then we're talking about someone that created you for the pleasure of them. And this is in a very most healthy way. You being unhappy don't please the creator. You being unhappy don't please God. You being unhappy don't please the goddess. You being unhappy don't make nothing highly spiritual happy. Think about that. So a man says, Yvette, wow, uh, let me see. Angel says, wow, Yvette, a man, Yvette, that's right, peace creator. God sent you grandbabies, yes. When you take one step, he will take two. The father gave us free will. Yes, yes, yes. But most don't use it. Free will for what? You don't use it. <laughs> not you personally. We're not using it. We're not using the free will. We're just, but I'm telling you, number one, yeah, because what we have to do as Africans and what we used to do, the ones that know, know, and I'm talking about Africans even on the continent because they don't, some, everybody lost something. Colonization was just as negative as the enslavement Holocaust. Everybody lost something when it comes to African, but we can recreate redesign not just your own life think about this you in the one year you got an ailing son you got a daughter that ain't got it all together you got a mother or father that needs some help write the picture for your life because your life affects others if you could intentionally write out, self-express, speak out, which we're doing in the speaking activation, the, the six-week training course, if you could effectively do that, you would automatically change the lives of everybody around you because you ain't come by yourself. You attach to somebody, a sister, a brother, a mother, a friend, a boyfriend, a, a, a co-worker, somebody you bring meaning to their lives. If you think ain't nobody checking for you, your boss is checking for you. The secretary, the receptionist at the front desk is checking for you. So you are connected. You have to get your life together. Why don't you write it the way you want? Why don't you bring up the highest vibration of frequency, which is fun, 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 fun. We need to have fun and we don't do it. That's why I'm offering this course. And I hope that you can take join it. Let me see what my sisters are saying. Tasha just joined. She's giving me hearts, 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 and I love it. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Yvette says, he will forever walk with a limp. But, girl, he is making babies, so he is good. I love it. Laugh out loud. So he is doing very well. He wrote the script, too. He wrote his life out, too. There's lessons for all of us to learn. And some of us, you may not like the way somebody learned their lesson. You may not even like the way somebody write up their new beginning. You may not. I want you to look at it even differently from a new beginning. I don't know, a beginning, which is the beginning, right? It's the start of and new, and I get that, but it always feels like I'm starting something new from something old. Can you get in your mind the vibrational frequency of there is nothing that ever came before today, that nothing ever happened to you, that nothing did not not happen to you, that nothing existed, that you were just born, that you are writing the script. Do you know what that means? It allows you to let go of the hurt and the pain and the fear and the anger. It doesn't exist. If you hold on to the not, anything in the past nine years, you block your blessings for today. Now, that's high. Yes, I get it, Kendall says. Thank you. I don't know who else get it. Kendall get it. I'm really talking high here. I'm saying to you, I don't care how good it was. You got to let that go.
done. The cycle's over. You have a new one. What you want to do? What do you want to do? And let me know if you're all still here. I saw the, uh, I saw the thing go like it was a, uh, okay, thank you, Jen. I see you. I'm okay, great. I get it. Thank you, Karen. You get it. Thank I love it. If you get it, let me know. Because, you know, I know I'm going there, but I, we ain't, you know, you ain't no suckers or punks. So, I mean, you can do this because you know. Karen says, hallelujah. Jackie says, still here. Yes. Please share, y'all, if you feel inclined to share. Also, y'all, don't forget, I have a new, uh, um, a new what? I have a new YouTube channel called Afrocentric Spiritual Home Decor. Afrocentric Spiritual Home Decor on YouTube. You should check it out. I have one video on it that was on my other channel. You might have seen it. But um, another one is coming. My husband and I are in the editing. He doing all my editing. We're going to have some edited, a lot of them. And I think you'll love them. I personally love them. So uh, Lisa's here. Good. Jessica says, you are so right. Thank you. Have you put away any new vision? On a new Not yet, sweetie, but it's coming. My husband's going to edit tomorrow. And my goal is to have it on Friday. Every Friday, a, a one video a week to start. And it's so every Friday. So that's my goal. So help me out. All right, y'all. So I just want to make sure you're getting it. I'm so glad that you are. It's so important that we as Africans, we knew this to use the time of the year or the cycle of the, of the universe to actually get what we want. I would love to have you ladies. Oh, that's right. And plug this in. Oh my goodness. I got a low battery. Hold on. Hey, Warren. All right, y'all, guess what? You're going to have to wait because I have to get this wire. It is imperative that I get this wire. Hold on. All right, ladies, thank you for waiting. I know y'all say y'all do. I know y'all would not want this going off. Did you know this is real life? Okay, close. I'm charged. I'm charging. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, ladies. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for waiting. I'm going to join uh, tonight what I want to man. I'm going to journal tonight what I want to manifest in my life. Yes, now the universe has been speaking to me through so many means. Yes, Karen. Yes. And Audrey just joined in. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful thing. Now, this is the last part I want to talk to you about because it's very important. Spirit came to me. Okay, y'all. I don't know if y'all don't believe me, uh, but I think that you do. I think you don't. I don't know if you don't understand. I know you believe me. So let me give you some understanding about how manifestation works and how it works for people of color, indigenous people. There's no way that we've ever did this. I need all this time alone. You do need alone time because you work outside your home, because you're living in a lot of ways an unnatural state. You're doing things that you don't love. So, of course, when you have time to yourself, you need it. But when we used to heal, we healed together. We healed in groups or circles or communities. We healed in ceremony. You have to find a community. You have to find. I created the community with the, with the speaking activation. That's what I'm creating. I'm really creating a community. You can't do it alone. I, I am the queen of alone, in a sense. And I, I have to. That's why I have these classes. That's why I do the live streams. That's why I do the YouTube. I know I need you. I know that I cannot do it without you. I know that I'm only half of me without you. If I'm self-expression, thank you for the love. Thank you for the, the hearts. Thank you for everything. Mer, uh, Worley says, Nubia, I love you so much. Finally got a chance to see your live stream. Yay, I'm so glad. Jen Sadiq says, yes, I need a community. Lisa says, Lisa, I learned the seasons through your teachings. Oh, I believe I follow winter, spring, summer. Thank you, Ashe. I'm so happy. Thank you for all the love and the hearts. You're making me feel so great and loved and appreciated. And I know you'll want to join. I know. I I know you got to get past the funds. I know, so I'm not. I'm not feeling away. I know that you would, and I know you will, ladies. I got to tell you that I see it. I feel it. I see the good in my own life. I see 
where I could possibly go, but I also see where I would need to go in order to have my dreams. You know, I joke a lot, and I was. It's true. You saw yesterday I was in the spirit, and I said some remark, well, no, Oprah will never call me, and I knocked my whole camera down. See, you, the speaking activation is very powerful. It's going to show you that when you are close to spirit, everything you say, you will, you will get an answer from it. From what you say, you will receive answers. The fact is that I should never say no one or who. I don't know where the universe is going to take me, but it's going to be good. It's going to be high. It's going to be special. Maybe it's going to be in front of a lot of people. Maybe it's not. I'm not even trying to write. But, but, I can, but if I want that, I can write that. So did you notice when I started talking in the one year about something that's probably not going to happen? So I thought the universe said, uh-uh-uh, hush your mouth. Don't put that on you unless you want it. That's community. Me being here talking to you all, I had to see my, for my own self how much I, I don't know if that would have happened if I was just talking to myself. I might not have caught that sign. You know, I'm, I used to not know how to transition well. I used to not understand that a lot of times in my life, so I'm almost 50, so let's say 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. So this is my fifth nine-year cycle. This is my fifth time around. So by the fifth time, because by 50, when I'm into so 19, 15, 45, 54, when I get to 54, I'm ending another nine-year cycle. But this is truly just if you go by just how old you are and you can see what cycle. By the fifth one, I'm finally, and that says a lot, you got to get old, okay, to get it. I'm finally figuring out that I'm a creative being that I will always grow and change and that when things go on in my life, it's because, and they don't look good and I'm struggling, it's because I am resisting the change. This is a message to all those that resist the change. You resist the change, but you say, but I'm, all, I'm healing. You resist the change when you say, I'm spiritual, I'll let spirit take over. You're resisting the change when you stay in suffering. You're resisting the change. You can't resist it. As a matter of fact, not only can you not resist it, you have to move it, push it along. You have to write the change. We've been too passive. We've been taught passively by religion, by our families that want to keep us safe, by conditions, circumstances, the media, whatever you want to call it. It's not true. I keep telling you, I know it. I know it to be true. Lisa says, I mean, Jackie says, I'm sending hearts, but they are now showing on the screen. Oh, I wanted to let you guys know, is there something I can do to fix it? Somebody assists my queen. She, L. Robinson says, sometimes the media answers. I say, Lisa says, you bad like that, sis. You are greatness. Whatever you want, you got it. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. Karen says, come on. So I'm, uh, but a girl, thank you. You talking now, queen. Thank you. She L. Robinson, I'll tell you, Queen, I um took me a while. And now Spirit said, if you want to get through transitions easily and effortlessly, if you want to go without kicking and screaming and falling and fighting and being tired and broke and you know all the stuff we go through as queens, as black women, Spirit said, why don't you just accept that the way you did it and the way it happened before, it ain't happening like that no more. That's why you re that's why you go into a struggle because you're resisting that ain't it even if it was good <laughs> cuz you know why cuz there's something better and you won't go into the better but you ask for it you wrote the goal you visualize you meditate you write out your affirmations you do the vision board but then something be like okay so guess what everything you used to like used to know and used to do let it go we get into, I almost, you know, we look at in our society as people that are very disciplined to a religion or disciplined to some way of life as like sometimes like higher beings, like something that look up to, to aspire to. What if they plumb crazy? What if they doing that damn thing that they should be in to stop doing? What if they in their heart know that they outgrew that, don't feel it anymore, not connected to it, but everybody expects it? Who told us that? Why is the person who f seems to fly higher and higher and higher through change, why don't we admire that person? 
because they don't look comfortable because we see them going through their changes and we get like, oh my God, see, they changed and look, they're struggling or see, they changed. No, they're changing and str they're struggling because they too are like, look, I've changed. I'm struggling. <laughs> That's why they struggling. They ain't looking at it like, you know, I'm talking about myself now. They ain't looking at it like, wait a second, I'm struggling because I'm trying to hold on to some old life, <laughs> the good old life. It's a good new life now. Spirit said, well, what's up with the good new life? You talking about the good old life? You can have that. That's done. That don't even exist, but you holding on. Now, the bad stuff, you, you holding on to that too. God said, I can't win. <laughs> How I'm going to win if I ain't right within? How I'm going to win if I ain't right within? How I'm going to do it? Spirit's like, you ain't, I can't win. You, you hold on to the good, you hold on to the bad. I don't know what to tell you. Let it all go. You be like, but even the good, even the good. Could you let it go? I try. I do my best. <laughs> Jen says, my birthday is Sunday. I'm turning 45. Yes. Congratulations. I feel strong that I'm beginning again. Yes, you are. Thank you so much for this message. You are very welcome. She L. Robinson says acceptance. Yes. She L. Robinson says, You're talking to me too. Ashe. A worldly says, Nubia, do you grow in life when your parents are not supportive? I'm having a hard time moving up and being the daughter that they want want me to do or be, right? But I grew their ways because I am moving towards a more holistic way of life and they are waiting for me to fail. You know what? Do you grow with your parents? Yes, you do. So do you grow in life when your parents are not supportive? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you know what? After a while you realize, okay, so Worley, let's do some stuff right here. You in the one year, so it don't even matter. You you called up them parents and them circumstances because you needed to learn something. I'm going to tell you this. Whether you think you learned it or not, just say you learned it and let it be done. Once you really believe that that's it, I don't, and I, if I didn't learn it, it don't even matter. If I didn't learn it, it don't even matter. It's over. It's a time that don't even exist. Do you understand that that's a higher way of thinking? That's a higher almost reality. It puts you in charge. See, we've been taught, especially in this holistic or metaphysical kind of community, that we have to solve it. We have to heal it. We have to figure out why they're not supportive and why do I attract them and then why do I feel like I attracted them. And then you got to go through that trip for a little while, take yourself through that one and do a whole bunch of yoni stings. And then you do some other little Reiki stuff. And then you do, and you're still, 10 years later, you're still talking about the same thing about you healing. Then you ain't healed. So you shouldn't talk no more. You get to change it. So you, Worley, how would you like your life to be? How would you like your life to be? You can write it again. You made a mistake. You didn't make a mistake. It was a bad play. It was a bad play. Don't nobody write a good play every time. Don't nobody make a good movie. Don't no great director <laughs> direct a good movie every time. Don't no great playwright write every play that's great every time. So you wrote the play. It's a little off. You want to change the characters. You want to change the scenery. You want to change the background. And if you came into you and everybody else, the Friday, trans, uh, it is transformative speaking activation. That's what we do. It don't even matter if it is or not. It don't have to be. That's what matters. Don't matter if it is or not. What matters is it don't have to be any longer. And you get to change that. You get to write that. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. And if y'all feel inclined, hey, Worley says, I say, thank you, queen. And y'all feel inclined to join me, you can. You already know I'm going to come up here with some new things. You already know I'm going to change. Th those that are my true followers, like I love y'all, all of y'all that love me and follow me. I don't know what the true is. But you've been with me for a while. That's what I was wanting to say. You know it's going to be a new episode. You know it's going to be being me. You're going to see me somewhere. You're going to be like, oh, I knew that she was going there. I expect her to be sitting up there. I expect her to be speaking there. I expect her to be. I'm telling you, I'm speaking my word, so you should speak yours. You should speak your word. Thank you for the hearts. I'm speaking my word. You're going to see me somewhere, some TV. So I don't know where. I, mean, I don't even know. I don't have to be TV. Wherever it is, the high places in the world, because I'm here for my people. 
Y'all gonna be like, oh my goodness, is that Lisa Marie, aka Nubia I? Don't you remember her? She used to be on YouTube. What is that? Oh, what? What? And she help her people still? <laughs> See, that's my vision. What's yours? What's your vision? That's mine. That's mine. So I love the hearts and thank you for the love and thank you for the understanding. Let me tell you what I did today. I'm just looking up when I'm looking at the clock, y'all. Let me tell you what I did today. I clean, honey. I clean, I clean every day. I clean, I, I do a lot, but I organize, I clean. I actually purge some more. Let me tell you about life and how you know you are growing and you got to continue to keep the mirror clean. And think about the mirror clean. Why do I clean my mirrors every single day? Because I'm trying to, because I'm wanting to see clearly every single day. Every day I want to see clearly. Every day I'm cleaning that bathroom. Every day I'm, I'm shining it up good. But what usually happens is I look at something that I've seen a thousand times and it looked fine, it looked okay, and then one day you realize that it's a little cluttered. I want you to take this as a metaphor. I'm talking about cleaning. I'm talking about life, though. It's a metaphor. And all the time, it looked neat. It was everything was in its place. And I, everything I thought was up in the space on my countertop, I thought I needed. And there was a box where, a catch-all box, if you will, where you put, like, if, you, if I get, like, a magazine or one of those, you know, spiritual papers that they have in the lobbies of Whole Foods, you know, those spiritual papers, um, I put those in there, those little magazines about spiritual stuff, you know. I put those in there. But I, today I said, why is this box up here? Don't go with the whole decor. It don't, it's unnecessary. And it's, it's almost psychologically forcing us to put things in there that we really don't need. I don't really read those spiritual like books of esoterics of the goddess running through the field. Like I don't read that anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't, actually I don't read a lot of the spiritual books anymore. I clean instead. I'm living the spiritual life. I don't want to read about it anymore. I don't, I don't pull cards. I don't do the oracle cards anymore. I, I'm not saying I'm against it. I think that's beautiful where you are. I got a direct link to the creator, so I don't, I don't feel like I need to do those things anymore. But I do clean, and I feel like that's the same thing. See, when I want to answer, instead of pulling an oracle card, I actually wipe down something. And I spend so much time on it that I'm meditating and I'm getting answers. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I create, I go get flowers from the Dollar Tree and put them in the dirt. I mean, like, I, I talk to God and the creator in a whole nother way than I used to before. I can't, because it's the number, nine, nine years is gone. I can't talk that talk. I can't use that language. I've changed. So what about you? What about you? So speaking is everything. Speaking is everything. So ladies, I just want you to know I'm going to get off a little bit early, but I will be on tomorrow. And then after that, the, the, the training course six weeks starts. It's called Speaking Activation for Abundance. It is dealing with theater and drama. To, we're going to create characters in our lives over, but we're going to do it in a creative form. And so it's, we're going to manifest quicker. I really hope you can do it. If not, go to the website. I will be putting up some of the March specials. I'm taking off a lot of the stuff, and I'm putting up some new things for the March special, um, and you're going to love it. And please uh, subscribe. If you go to my YouTube channel, the, the latest video has the link in the description box to my new YouTube channel, but it is called Afrocentric Spiritual Home Decor. There's no other channel called that. When you put an Afrocentric spiritual home, I'm going to be the first and only one to pop up, and that's what we want. I'm Anise, how are you, queen? I, we kind of been talking, haven't we? Uh, I'm Anise, yeah, you said, wow, I had that thought while cleaning my bathroom this morning. I say, oh, yes, I'm Anise, I'm looking forward to you, too. I got your emails, and yes, there you go. Kendall says, me too. I don't need so many tools anymore. Exactly. They were tools and they were great. And I said, even everything that worked, even everything that was good, it ain't good. It don't work anymore. It's still good. It just don't work. It's, it's gone. Let it go. 
That's the, that's a great example of that idea of letting the good go as well. Jackie says, I want you to know that I do understand. I have been listening and understanding. Thank you. very. I'm so glad, Queen. Thank you. Um, Anise Creed says, yes, I have slowed down on consuming books now. I take action instead. You got it. I think I used reading as a distraction for a while. You know what? I think it was a distraction. You know, I think it was a love. I think that, you know, um, Anise, I think that, I mean, I think that when you're younger, however that age is for you, you don't know and you think that these things outside of you have answers for you. And in a lot of ways, if they break down the, 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 the brick wall, if they break down or chip away at the barriers that keep you from your true divine self, then they were good. But after a while, you'll start getting understanding that I used to think that the creator can only really come to me if I took a two-hour bath every single day for seven days a week. Why would the creator make it that dang hard? Why would the creator say, you can only get spiritual downloads from me <laughs> if you get, take a bath for two hours, seven days a week? Now I clean for two hours, I clean more, and I talk to the creator that way. I really thought that. I really thought it was the, the raw foods. I really thought that the raw foods was allowing me to have a deeper and a closer relationship to the creator. Now, I know y'all know since I got to North Carolina, I have not really, I'm not, I mean, I eat cooked foods. Do you feel like, and let's be honest, do you feel like I've lost my connection to the creator? In some ways, don't you think I have a more practical approach to the, to the, to the creator? Now, I don't know the Bible. I can't tell you what God said in that one. But my God, my God is my creator tell me that I am, that he or she loves me anyway, loves me unconditionally, will always be with me, follow me, lead me, guide me, no matter if I eat cooked food or raw food. So the idea, think about it, that, that that's gone. It was great. It was good. It's over. And yes, some things we use as distractions. I, I'm not disagreeing at all. I'm saying I even will go a little more into it and say, and they wanted to add that piece of information. So thank you. Hey, Robin. Jackie says, I know I'm still grieving. I need to ask the father for strength to move on. I know my mom and my sister would want us to do that. They know I have so many things that I want to do. Yes, queen. I know that they would. I know that they would. I know that. I wanted to let you know also, Lisa, girl, that you are not heavy. Oh, not, oh thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, Sanchel Brown, how are you? Jackie says, he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He will always love us. Say it, girl. Absolutely. Yvette says, that's right, Jacqueline. My dad and my uncles didn't believe in excuses, so I have no choice but to keep on going. Absolutely. Worley says, always growing, Nubia, always moving forwards. I say, that's right. Kay O'Brien Joy, you are so beautiful. Thank you, Kay. I think you are so beautiful, too. And I means that. <laughs> I means that. So, ladies, I am going to get off because tomorrow I'm coming for this, the last day this week because I'm starting the training course. For those that are getting anything out of this, go to the website and purchase something that you could afford. For those that want to join the group, uh, the, the training course, you know that you have uh, payment arrangements, so work it out. And Miss Jackie says, it still hurts, though. I know they want the best for us. I know, you know what? It does hurt, but Miss, Miss Jackie, look at it this way. If you're going to be in the next training course, which I'm so excited, we're going to put that hurt in another place. You're going to be able to heal it from a different angle. And that's why I'm so glad you're coming into and will be in the next training course, Miss Jackie. Thank you so much for, for joining. Hey, Miss Santel. Hey, tell the truth, lovely. Girl, I'll be getting all your, uh, all your inspiration or you being inspired. And I uh, thank you so much for the love you show me, Santel Brown. She came from Wild Woman Who Run the Womb and she tore it up because she's a fabulous dancer. Kendall says, good one. Thank you. These are fun. I'm so glad. Robin says, hey, queen, I love how you're... You journey and your willingness to share it with us. We don't have to be anyone other than who we are. Never, ever, ever. And wait till we do this Afrocentric spiritual home decor. You're going to be like, yes, <laughs> yes. 
Come on now. So Jen says, thank you again for your message. Says, you are most welcome, my sister. Nanya says, greetings, sis. Great to see you. I was thinking about food today. I wonder if the raw food way of eating is a way of detoxing fasting. And with fasting, your body and spirit unearth layers to see and hear clearer. After detoxing, fasting, eating, cook balance with raw could be the next step. When the body needs to heal, perhaps raw is helpful. I think that why well, call it raw then? Just call it a fast. That's all. That's all. Just call it a fast. I'm fasting. Why you got to have a name and a lifestyle? Why it's got to be different? You probably ate raw food already. You may eat more of it. If you need to, then you should do that. I mean, that's what I feel. I feel like it's not a diet. It's not a lifestyle. It's, a, it's, a, it's in your already lifestyle. Eat it when you need it. And no, you don't. But it's not like a it. Because see, then it seems like, why can't you eat raw food every day? And just eat raw food every day. But you don't eat it just raw every day. But I agree with you that raw food, it could be a great detox. I think we should fast. I think we should go without eating or drinking water for a period of time. I think the body does need a break. But I mean, to call raw like it's some, I was doing that like it was some certain kind of lifestyle that was superior. I don't, I don't think it's for me. I know a lot of raw foodists that have deep issues. I know a lot of raw foodists that still suffer and have been therapy. I know a lot. So I'm saying like, so why is it greater then? Why is it greater? If it's, I don't want to keep peeling layers. I want to be peeled already. I don't want to keep peeling layers. I want to live a little bit. I don't want to be in constant therapy. I don't want to be in constant healing. I want to be in constant rejoicing. I want to be in constant here and now. I don't want to wait for the one day. I don't want to reach the, the, the utopia. If utopia means that nobody I know in life can be there with me, I don't want to do that. There's a whole life, and I don't think you, if you break it into parts, then you're being very Eurocentric, and we're African. We're not Eurocentric. There's no parts. There's holes. There's parts of holes and whole parts, but there ain't no parts. There ain't no stuff. I can't do that no more. I can't do that. Like, I, can't. I mean, I eat raw foods. I don't have to call it raw foods. They are calling me back to drum practice. By peace event. Lisa, who did you say was the dancer? Oh, Santel Brown. She's a dancer. Yeah, I have a hard time with labels. Yeah, I know. I know you get it, Nanya. And thank you for asking. So, uh, yes, Robin says for real I heard that. Amen. Oh, yeah, I don't, mm -mm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going to enjoy life. But that was okay. Again, it was beautiful for the time. It got me to a place. I mean, it was, I am so glad I went through it. I'm more glad I came out of it because I was afraid that I wasn't going to do it. But y'all, I want you to know, be clear, I can still eat. <laughs> and I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. <laughs> I need to see life from another perspective. Maybe I'll be a heavier. That'd be another perspective. I ain't never been heavy. Let's see. I'm not saying overweight. I'm saying heavier. Let me see what that feel like. Maybe there's something in that I need to grow and learn. But I, I move every day. I eat once a day. I don't mean to. I mean, I eat one meal a day. I do be snacking, though. But I'll be moving. I never sit down. I'm cleaning, always decorating, organizing, creating, decorating, organizing, making better. Work. I'm always, I move to the whole house. Oh, I'm going. Y'all be like, oh my goodness, can we catch her? She, she, wow. I accept. I accept the imperfections, the stomach getting bigger, the butt getting bigger. I accept it. And I didn't before, y'all. I couldn't before. Let me go here. <laughs> Y'all let me go down this road. Let me go now. Let me go. Skip along with me. Let me go down the food road. I ate, fit. I ate, I ate what I said to your spaghetti for five days. I know I'm bloated. I don't even matter. It won't last. It'll go away. <laughs> this too shall truly pass. I'm done with it now, but it was great. I went in it, y'all. I delved. I delved deeply. I went all the way in. Wasn't afraid. Now I don't want to do it no more. When I want to do it, I'll do it again. I won't go back to my potatoes. <laughs> my potatoes is real good to me, but I'm not going to never not. I used to feel guilty when I did things like that, feel bad. I don't never want to feel like that again. I don't know how many years on this earth, but I'm going to have a good time the remainder of this lifetime. You believe that, and I'm going to do it healthily, but healthily is doing things when, and doing some other things. That's healthy too, so I would not do that again, but... It doesn't really matter. The chain is broken. The locks are falling off. And the number one year is here. So I love you with all of my heart. 
I am so thankful. It is an hour, and we will see you. I will see you tomorrow. Tune in last night for a while because I'll be on. Don't forget about me, y'all. I'm always at the Blackberry Beauty Academy at www.theblackberrybeauty.com. We have a new website. It's not up yet. My, my uh, assistant was, uh, she took ill, but she is better. And so, you know what? Yeah. I need to get that up and stop playing around. Love you all. <laughs> so uh, I heard that. Amen. Kendall says, food is so good in the Carolinas. Come on. Food is so dang good in the Carolinas. And y'all, wait. I'm in farm country. This food is more potent. It's more local. It is the best food we've been lied to. California don't have the best food in the world. There's other places as well. Uh, much love, Queen. Good night, Worley. Love you, Robin, too. Nanya says, we all, hear, we all have to embark on our own food journey. It's good to share and explore together. Freedom is priceless. I will have to listen to the replay because I missed this one. Good night. Good night, Queen. Karen says, love you, Lisa Marie. Love you, too. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy, Ancient African Wisdom for the Modern Sister. Thank you for the hearts. Peace and blessings.